Welcome to Heaven's Peace Plan, the only worldwide radio program dedicated to bringing you the full message of Fatima. Heaven's Peace Plan is hosted by Father Nicholas Gruner and is a weekly feature on this station at the same time. Heaven's Peace Plan is the only radio program bringing you God's urgent message of warning and hope to the United States, Canada, and nearly 200 nations around the world five days a week. Now here with today's program is Father Nicholas Gruner. Welcome to Heaven's Peace Plan. I'm Father Nicholas Gruner. I have two very special guests here today. Father Paul Leonard, welcome back to our program. I'm happy to be back, Father. And uh, Tom Zola, out, from, out in California. How are you doing today, Tom? Uh, very well, Father. Thank you. And uh, Tom is the... Uh, Director of the Apostolate. The Apostolate of Catholic Books, Catholic Treasures, more exactly, which are primarily books, but among other, you have many treasures out there. We all do, and you help distribute them to the Catholic faithful. Perhaps uh, before uh, before we start, we'd like to let our listeners uh, know that there are many questions people are asking about the New World Order. People are asking about what has the New World Order got to do with world peace, and what has this got to do with Christianity and uh, and with Our Lady of Fatima's Peace Plan. And I think we're going to try to answer these questions. Uh, there are questions that go back into uh, into antiquity, we could say. But we will before we talk about this, let us pray to Our Lady, asking Our Lady to help us understand the times that we're in, the crisis that we're in, and that her plan, her Fatima plan, is the only one that will really work. And uh, she foresaw this uh, great conspiracy in this new world order, and she has given us a solution to it. Let us pray together the Hail Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Perhaps, uh, Tom, you would like to give us a little bit of... Uh, background about the New World Order. You, uh, you've you been listening to President Bush and others talk about this recently. Perhaps you have something you would like to add. Uh, we certainly have been, and we've been quite alarmed at, at this new development. The uh, the, whole, the, 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 the president, uh, it seems that uh, every time he speaks, has to include his, his uh, statement on the New World Order. Now, of course, this has never originated with the president has been on our dollar bill for since the uh, Federal Reserve Act in the beginning of the century. And the uh, understanding of the New World Order really has been a goal of the Masonic Orders for more than almost three centuries. It really dates back to the time of the um, redemption in which the... Uh, the Messiah was rejected by his own people, and instead of accepting Christ, the Jewish nation as a as a whole decided to uh, work and plan for their new Messiah, uh, which would be a a on a natural level, as opposed to the Messiahship that our Lord presented, which was on a supernatural level, and the um, the working of the of the Jews that rejected our Lord uh, through the centuries have been summed up in their attempt to create a, a one-world government under their leadership instead of the um, supernatural uh, unity that our Lord had proposed to the world for the sake of reuniting all of mankind again with God. Plus, we're, we're covering wide... Uh uh, it covers the entire spectrum of the of the uh, story of the human race. For more information on today's program, call 1-800-263-8160. Uh, I think the first thing that you pointed out was that the New World Order doesn't date or start with uh, George Bush. It goes back, uh, at least in the United States history, to the dollar bill, which has on the back of it Novus Ordo Seculorum, which means New uh, World Order, uh, if I can translate that the same way. And uh, that goes back to at least 1917 or 1913. Uh, but what you're telling us, it goes back even further than that. Masonry started in, at least it came above ground as, uh, in 1717, and uh, it was condemned by the popes since uh, 1738, and is still condemned by the church to this day, although some people are confused on that point. And, uh, uh, and this idea of a new world order dates back at least to the time of 1717. It's also came out in the Illuminati in around 1776 or thereabouts. Um, I'm talking about when it became public. I'm not saying it now. But what you're saying is, in fact, this this, this uh, idea of the New World Order is basically to set up a 
world government under the direction of the Antichrist, the, the one who would claim to be the Messiah, and he would uh, uh, try to supplant, uh, as it says in sacred scripture, be, would hold himself up as if he were God, when we know he would not, it would be uh, someone who was against God. Um, and perhaps, Father Paul, you would like to uh, comment on this, and maybe we can get down to what it means to us today at this time. The New World Order, as I've uh, ex explained uh, uh, in my recent article in the Fatima Crusader, is a preparation for the, a one-world government. Uh, this has been constantly uh, the, the plan of Freemasonry. Already in the 1730s, there was a book published, uh, I believe in Brussels, uh, called the, the Secret of Masonry, and it is already revealed in that book that uh, uh, the plan of, of Masonry is to establish a one-world government. Down throughout the, the centuries, the great heresies, uh, such as Albigensianism, there were uh, Talmudists who were directing uh, the heresy of the Albigensians, and it's very interesting when you, when you look at their social doctrine. Uh, they wanted to get rid of uh, private property. They wanted to get rid of national frontiers. Again, you were heading toward uh, the establishment of a world government. Uh, Heinrich Graetz, the great Jewish historian, uh, pointed out in, in his uh, voluminous work that uh, with, the establish with the establishment of a, of a, of, of a Christian empire, uh, the, the Jews had lost their, their civil rights. Uh, they had uh, uh, undermined uh, Christianity, as the, as the fathers of the church uh, uh, explain. Uh, as has been historically recorded, uh, and as, as in order to defend itself, Christian civilization uh, justly uh, deprived them of, of certain rights. They couldn't hold public office and such. And so they, they dreamed of the past when they had the greater liberties under the Roman Republic, and so therefore they, they intended to overthrow Christian civilization and replace it with, uh, uh, with, a, with a republic which would be under their own leadership. And this, in fact, is what they... What they uh, they began to do during the uh, the days of St. Bernard, uh, uh, back during the uh, 1100s, uh, with the overthrow of uh, the papal uh, government of the, of the papal states. Uh, that was w w one of the most unusual uh, uh, times in history when uh, the Pope actually had to declare a crusade against Rome because there was an imposter Pope, uh, in fact, the Jewish anti-pope who was reigning from Rome and uh, uh, Pope Innocent II, I believe, uh, had to uh, declare a crusade uh, against uh, against Rome. Uh, the, the popes at that time, of course, I believe, were Pope Eugene the Third and uh, uh, the English Pope uh, Benedict Shakespeare. At first, the anti-pope had been elected. His name was uh, he was Cardinal Pierdoni, uh, the grandson of a Jewish convert. After he was uh, overthrown and the, the Pope's authority was reestablished in Rome, then the government of Rome was overthrown. And a secular republic was set up in Rome, and it, it took a number of years before finally uh, the, the Pope's uh, monarchy was reestablished uh, in, over the Papal States. For your free copy of the latest issue of the Fatima Crusader, call toll-free 1-800-263-8160. Perhaps to bring this down to, we have to uh, try to confine this a little bit to, to get to the common. First of all, what we're both all seem to be saying here is that the New World Order is actually an old, it's not something new, it's something that's been planned uh, a long time ago. It's mentioned in the sacred scripture even with the coming of the Antichrist and so forth. And, uh, and right now, what, we, what, we, what is new is that a president of the United States has been saying this word New World Order time and time again, and especially in the context of this war with Iraq, and uh, and he says that uh, one of the first times it was mentioned by any president in the public that I know of was by President Bush in September in his talk to the nation. He mentions it seven times, which is apparently a significant number for masonry, and uh, and he mentioned it at that time that there was that for a hundred generations, which to make that very plain makes 2,500 years, in other words, he dates this quest for the New World Order. The only way we're going to find peace in the world is by going back beyond Christ uh, to uh, a time before Christ that uh, we don't have. We can bypass Christ, in other words, in seeking the New World Order, which ties in again with uh, uh, the whole idea that it's trying to bypass Christ, this whole thing of New World Order. And when we see that the soldiers, these 
Soldiers are not allowed to wear religious symbols on them, like a scapular or a rosary. The uh, priests or the ministers are not allowed to wear a cross or a crucifix on their on the uniform because this is part of the soldiering for the new world order. Uh, it all ties in that uh, the new world order is uh, also uh, against Christ. And now maybe uh, we're saying too far, but maybe you'd like to say something about that, Tom. Well, uh, I think that uh, for the sake of the listeners, that the uh, what's important is to have a perspective. Is really all of that that is being dealt with here in this subject matter. The uh, Freemasonry is, is in essence a tool of the uh, Jewish nation to uh, Im to implement the one world government which the Jews have uh, have attempted to uh, establish ever since the rejection of the Messiah. It's interesting to note that the uh, chief rabbi of Palestine uh, upon the inauguration of the new state of Israel stated that eventually it will, be, will lead to the inauguration of the true union of the nations through which will be fulfilled the eternal message to mankind of our immortal prophets. Uh, it is in the perspective of this uh, rabbi that the, the establishment of, of Israel as the new home of the Jews uh, is the beginning of this unity which has uh, always been aimed at by the new world order. In other words, the, the rejection of Christ uh, as the Messiah will be uh, completed by the acceptance of the uh, Jews of what they believe is the true Messiah under, and that all the nations of the world will be under that, under that leadership. Uh, the war at the moment is really involving all the elements that are of uh, concern in this subject matter. We're dealing with the state of Israel. We're dealing with the uh, with the uh, area of the Middle East. We're dealing with the the non-Jewish nations of the world in an attempt to unify uh, in order to solve this uh, problem of the Iraqi War. And that, for some reason, all of it is continually being placed under the uh, goal of a new world order. Uh, the, um, the listener really, uh, if he's not familiar with any of this subject matter, has a, a tremendous amount of, of um, studying to do. Uh, we at Catholic Treasures have attempted to, to make available uh, various uh, books on the subject matter in which uh, the the understanding of it could be made a lot simpler. Well, maybe you have some books in mind that you would like to just name some titles of. The one that we're excited about at the moment has just been reprinted. It's called the, the Grand Orient Freemasonry Unmasked, or the Real Source of the Power Behind Communism, which is kind of its subtitle. Now, this is a series of lectures by Monsignor Dillon that was given at the... Uh, end of the last century and has been out of print for for almost a hundred years. Why do you recommend that particular book? Well, it seems to sum up the entire story of of the uh, of the New World Order that we're hearing so much about today. Uh, the, uh, the preface is by a very famous researcher of the Masonic question and the Jewish involvement in it. What's that his is name? Father Dennis Fahey. Oh, yes. It is a very, very powerful uh, introduction to the book, and then the book itself then carries the reader all the way through the history of Freemasonry and their and their hatred for Christ and the and the Catholic Church and the uh, attempt to establish, in essence, the, the New World Order. Uh, there are very many other titles in which um, this subject is treated in more detail, but. Uh, we're very excited about this particular title because it is a, an excellent summary. Friends of Our Lady, please help Sister Lucy now. Join our crusade to free Sister Lucy from her 30-year ordeal of silence. Call us now for your free postcards to send to the Vatican asking Sister Lucy to be freed. You will receive our free brochure, The Plot to Silence Our Lady, The Chronology of a Cover-Up. Please help by distributing these postcards in this free brochure to your friends, 
family, fellow workers, and all your neighbors. Call us now at our 1-800-263-8160 or write us at P.O. Box 422, Buffalo, New York, 14205. Our Lady is depending on you to do your part. Please call now at 1-800-263-8160. What is the name of the book again? It's called Grand Orient Freemasonry Unmasked. There's a number of uh, titles I could add to that. Uh, the first one that comes to my mind is Father Adler's book, uh, The Anti-Christian Revolution of Freemasonry. Unfortunately, the book has not yet been translated into English from the German. I have it in the German, and it's very revealing about uh, uh, the plans for the, for the New World Order, for the One World Government instigated by Freemasonry. Uh, and I might add that you, you hit the nail on the head. I'm very familiar with the quotation of the chief rabbi uh, that was, I believe, in 1948, about, about the time of the... Uh, establishment of the state of Israel that's correct that, uh, that they they came out and said that Israel was going to be the the center and hub of the, of the of the world government is what they were saying you find already back in the in the Freemasonic Almanac the, it was a German paper the Fre, uh, Freimaurische uh, Almanac I believe they call it Freimaur Almanac uh, where back in 1867 uh, uh, a Jewish uh, Masonic author by the name of uh, Levy Bing, if I remember his name correctly, stated that there would be uh, one day established uh, a, a supreme court, as it were, uh, for the entire world, a, a one-world court, which would have jurisdiction over the entire world. And would, in, he, in his own words, he says that the sons of Abraham will pronounce justice over the nations. Uh, there are organizations, of course, which are still rep uh, still uh, promoting this idea. Even Cardinal Casaroli, uh, a few years ago, as this. Uh, quoted in the Observatorio Romano, and the, the, the text is reproduced in the a book of uh, Father Adler, the uh, Zunit uh, of In this book, uh, we find the, the text of Cardinal Casaroli's speech where he's promoting the same idea of a supreme court of the world that would have a, a jurisdiction, a, gover a, a power over, a jurisdictional power over the nations. This leads back to the idea of, of Israel being the center of the world government, and uh, that t ties in uh, precisely to what is happening now in the Persian Gulf. Uh, Israel has been the behind-the-scenes instigator of the hostilities uh, of the, the U.S. and Allied forces against Iraq. Uh, already back in September, I believe on the 12th of September last year, in the Washington Post, uh, there was an article there that uh, revealed that uh, uh, State Department sources, senior uh, uh, senior officials in the State Department, uh, uh, disclosed uh, that there, there was already in preparation a long-term uh, uh, security uh, arrangement for the Persian Gulf, which would involve uh, Israel. And uh, a few days later, on the 20th of September, as it was reported in the Wall Street Journal, that the United States was already planning, for, uh, that the Pentagon, in fact, high, it was a, high, a senior Pentagon official revealed that uh, the United States was, was planning to have uh, a, a permanent establishment of uh, U.S. forces in the Persian Gulf. Beyond that, this conflict was prepared in advance, even before Iraq uh, attacked Kuwait. Uh, there were plans uh, within the Pentagon, I believe that there was an operation under General Schwarzkopf, uh, preparing uh, for the Iraqi invasion of Kuwait. From the very beginning, is from the, from the first moment that uh, Iraqi forces uh, uh, crossed the border into Kuwait, Israel was demanding that the United States repel the Iraqi forces, so much so that the Israelis even... Uh, 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 made a, a, a communication to, uh, it, was, it was not a public communication, but it was a, a, a diplomatically uh, uh, communicated to Washington, to the, I believe to the State Department, uh, but, but to the U.S. government certainly, that uh, if the United States did not attack uh, Iraq, then Israel would have to. And as, we, as I mentioned before, the United States has already been planning uh, to uh, include uh, Israeli forces in the uh, security uh, arrangement in the military occupation of uh, Iraq. If you have any questions about this program, call them into 1-800-263-8160. I want to thank them. The New York Times of the ninth day of September described that there was a secret war games barely two months ago 
for some of the U.S. Army's top brass assembled at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. This secret war game involved rehearsals for a U.S.-Iraqi military conflict. Now, when you consider that they had these war games a month before the invasion of Iraq, already they were planning uh, the invasion by Iraq of Kuwait, uh, and uh, there was no indication to the public that this uh, invasion of Kuwait was taking place. Yet, the United States knew of the uh, planned invasion. In fact, the CIA knew about it. The Soviet two spy satellites were over the, that area of the world. Uh, in fact, uh, General Makashov was the Al uh, General Albert Makashov, the Russian top Russian uh, general for uh, tank warfare, uh, was in Baghdad uh, in Iraq for, from the 17th of July. Uh, uh, both the Soviets and the and the American top command knew of this I invasion coming up, and uh, already uh, signals have been sent by the State Department telling uh, Saddam Hussein uh, not to concern that the United States would not defend uh, Kuwait on this very question. We can, uh, and Father Paul has a number of quotes on that point. Uh, we've mentioned them on television already. Uh, but what I find interesting here is that the United States Army at the top level was already uh, practicing for, for attacking Kuwait even before the invasion uh, of Kuwait or this crisis came up. Uh, it seems to be there's been some long-term planning here. I don't know if you have any comments on that. Well, I think I, I have something that may be quite alarming to most people. Uh, in studying the works of the uh, history of the Masonic Order, we come across the work of someone called uh, Albert Pike. Uh, General Albert Pike uh, was an American Freemason who was hired by the family in Italy called the Mazzini family. Uh, the attempt of, of the Masons to, to create a... Uh, a one world government it inaugurated this uh, hiring of Albert Pike to plan what turns out to be the three world wars uh, with the attempt that after each war there would be a, uh, a struggle to create a the one world government there was no timetable to these wars if the first one did not succeed then there would be needed a second one if the second one didn't succeed than the third. Now the plan for the three world wars were all laid out at one time. Uh, this, as I understand, is in the museum in London, and that uh, it, it, it possibly can still be seen by anybody interested in researching it. For your prayer requests, call toll free 1-800-263-8160. That number again is 1-800-263-8160. Eight one six zero. It's also of note to uh, to mention that the Third World War, as laid out by Albert Pike, was to be fought in the Middle East, and was to be fought between what it was called the World of Islam and political Zionism. Now, after the First World War, the attempt to have an international governing body, or what would have been the first uh, one, or the first New World Order, was called the League of Nations. League of Nations was uh, on its road to success, except that uh, it was discovered uh, some of the things that were going to develop, and uh, this was torpedoed by some of the members of President Wilson's cabinet. After the Second World War, the attempt at an international governing body is now called the United Nations. It is under this title that President uh, Bush is attempting to unify all the nations in opposition to the Iraqi invasion of Kuwait. Yet we know that on the books is still the Third World War. Now, if the sovereignty of the nations of the world are not sufficiently surrendered to the governing of the United Nations, it's going to necessitate uh, a Third World War. Whether or not the struggle that we're involved in at the moment is the beginning of that war is really uh, a guess at this point. It may just be a dry run, but it is interesting to note that the President of the United States is responsible for lining up uh, the unification of nations uh, for the purpose of acting together as a, as a force, as a what would be called the New World um, Police Force. And um, so I, I leave you with that. Uh, information. It's uh, from the standpoint of Catholic Charities, we uh, 
we're fascinated with every day's developments. And uh, our knowledge and the background that we have of, of the involvement of the, the Jews working with the Masonic Lodges to establish a new world order, and also the use of, the, of uh, communism as another weapon in the arsenal of the, of the Masons, um, of course, brings us down to the Fatima question and the, uh, the uh, revelation from Our Lady as to uh, the cause of world wars. Uh, as uh, she stated in the Fatima messages, uh, war is a punishment for sin. It might be asked uh, by every individual what sin uh, is heaven really concerned about or sins. And um, we at Catholic Charities suspect that the that this uh, sin being referred to is a rejection of, of our Lord's plan for reuniting mankind, which is membership in his mystical body. Um, it'd be uh, interesting that if the third secret of Fatima is ever revealed, that uh, we suspect that it may include this particular uh, piece of information that the sin that Our Lady is referring to in the um, Fatima statements about the cause of wars really is the denial of this basic fundamental uh, dogma of the Church, of its necessity for belonging to the Church in order to reunite mankind with God. I think the important thing is certainly to remember that Our Lady of Fatima told us, told us at uh, Fatima that uh, only I can help you, that is, uh, you know, people are talk about establishing a, a new world order to bring peace. What we know is that we can't have peace without the Prince of Peace, that is Jesus Christ, uh, being in charge of peace, not only in name but also following his teaching, his doctrine. And uh, any other attempt to bring world peace, uh, which is opposed to Christ, will will end in failure and disaster, as it says in sacred scripture. Unless the Lord build the house, they labor in vain. Who build it? unless the Lord guard the city in vain does the guard keep vigil and without God's blessing on uh, mankind's uh, searching for peace there will be no peace uh, if we do not do things God's way if we do them in opposition to God not only will we have peace we will have war we will have destruction and uh, and Our Lady tells us if my requests are granted Russia will be converted and there will be peace if my requests are not granted various nations will be annihilated and the whole world will be enslaved for a tax-deductible donation of five, ten, twenty-five dollars or more, a free cassette tape of this program is available. Please ask for program number five fifteen. You've been listening to Heaven's Peace Plan with Father Nicholas Gruner. For more information on today's topics and to obtain your free copy of the full-color magazine, The Fatima Crusader, along with Our Lady's Urgent Appeal and Rosary Novena booklet. Call us at 1-800-263-8160 or write Box 422, Buffalo, New York, zip code 14205. Call us now to ensure that Our Lady's message continues to be heard on this station. You can use your Visa or MasterCard to make your tax-deductible gift. And any size donation is needed and gratefully appreciated. Please call us now at 1-800-263-8160 or write Box 422, Buffalo, New York, zip code 14205. In Canada, write box 602, Fort Erie, Ontario, L2A5X3.